Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for May 5th, of 2023. Um, gosh, happy spring to everybody here in the north. So, um, gosh, I don't even know where to begin today. Uh, let's begin with going into the heart space. And um, if you are new here, we usually begin with uh, the Trinity breath, which is the three breath technique to move yourself from the head back into the heart. Um, and then let's see. Also, if you're new here, we are doing these 50 Questions Friday live to join us live. Simply sign up for the newsletter on our twistedsage.com website, and you will receive that information when we do lives. And otherwise, um, we do record everything and put it on YouTube. And good morning, Connie from Maine. Hey, Christine from Oz. And David from Telford, UK. Um, yeah, we have a really great group of folks that show up here live. And so all of you who are watching the recording, you might want to join us live here uh, because the chat is a place where we have a lot of knowledgeable folks. And plus, you can ask your question live as well. So let's see. Let's go ahead and do the three breaths to move into the heart space. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, so just putting your attention to the physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire, using your imagination and intention, connect with the heart of the earth and breathe in that energy, that support, that light from the earth. Breathing that up through the feet and into the heart. The second breath is connecting with you as creator God, as soul. Breathing in that light of you into the heart. Beyond religion, beyond belief, this is connecting with you. The third breath is breathing in that energy of creation and the energy of the earth, bringing them both together within you. And that is the Trinity. You as the human, you as earth, and you as creator or creation. And just imagine that energy flows through you that you are the conduit that connects the divine and the earth right through the human all right and so the reason we do the trinity breath is that it moves our consciousness from the head into the heart space and being in the heart space is where you are no longer so influenced by the emotional field by thought patterns, belief structures, all the things. So when you move into the heart space, that is where we begin as a human within the brain cells within the heart, according to heart math. Very wonderful group of beings. Okay, so <clears throat> we will begin. Uh, we'll start with some announcements and then we'll jump into questions. So if you are here live, please drop your questions into the questions tab. Um, and otherwise, the chat is to hang out and chat in. Like I say, we got some great folks that always show up here. Um, so some announcements. We are, you may have noticed here the past few days, the website is changing a little bit. We are working at consolidating our entire website. It's actually been WordPress and Shopify. We're bringing everything together so that we can create, we're going to create an entire new structure for the website. It's going to be a lot simpler, easier to navigate. We're going to have some basic filters on there, funnels, if you will, so that if you're interested in EMF, that's where you go. If you're interested in jewelry or if you're interested in energy tools, 
Um, basically, it's just going to be to help everybody find what they're looking for easier. And those who aren't into the woo-woo stuff of doing the energy work and things like that, you can stick with the EMF, the jewelry, that style of thing versus jumping into the rabbit hole of consciousness. Um, so we, we really want to broaden our, our reach to, to everybody because, um, as we all know, the human's kind of a funny thing in the way we believe and, and influence ourselves through the belief systems and structures, which is another reason to go into the heart space because it just really helps you step out of a lot of those limitations, um, of, of belief structures and the way you think and create anyway um let's see if there's anything new that's come up um we're doing some experiments with a few different things working on some things um as far as we're trying a coding on some of the tools just to see how it is i know some people it's not going to maybe react the best with them so we're still trying to figure out a way to keep the copper beautiful um, so anyway, we're trying a new product on some of the copper necklaces. We're not selling them. We're so don't worry about getting something that's not just pure copper. Um, but we're just trying them in house to see how this is going to hold up and how the bodies react to it. Um, let's see some of the other things that we are playing with. We are going to be building a new table. As you see back here, there is um, this big flower of life structure. And that is the foot of this table. And as you see, there are those 12 giant rings right behind me here. And that was one of our, I think, our fourth generation, third generation. Yeah, it was like our third generation of the Ascension Chambers that we created there. Um, for the Tesla technology convention years ago. And um, he uses a massage table to lay in. And this one has a Taurus at the top and a flower of life at the base. We're, we are working at, um, we're actually making 42 inch rings that we sell to a few different people. They're not on the website, but let's see an orchard out in Washington has bought a bunch of these 42 inch rings to go over their, their trees. And it's going to be, I'm really curious to see what happens with, with their, their apples. <laughs> it's going to be pretty amazing. Um, we've also, there's a, an, another friend of mine who builds um, giant sacred geometry shapes. He is also creating a similar structure here. And so we make the rings for him. Um, but we're going to be at the American Society of Dowsers in New York in june it is in new paul's new york at the suny university um i will be there speaking on i think june 9th or 8th or 9th i'll be speaking i'll be presenting light anchors at that conference and then also on sunday i will be teaching a half day workshop on light anchors and as many of you know um, from us and what we do, it's <clears throat> I've been teaching light anchors with the golden fire and light rods for many years. And light anchors was always the go-to tool for doing any of that old work. Um, you know, prior to 2020, when we were doing all this huge clearing of dense energies on the planet, um, you know, that was... It was a great tool for then. And as we stepped into this whole new paradigm that we are in now, I stopped teaching light anchors <clears throat> because it was basically, you know, more of a, a duality concept, but I'm bringing light anchors. <clears throat> Gosh, my apologies. A lot of dust and everything else here. Um, the light anchors that we are working at now, it's, it's just bringing the concept in without to allow somebody who still wants to fight the dark. You can use the light anchors to somebody who wants to simply bring a higher vibration space full of higher potentials and consciousness 
you can also use the light anchor. So the light anchors are going to be available for no matter what your modality or belief structures are. Um, so we're doing a half day shop workshop in New Paul's on June 10th, I believe, for the American Society of Dowsers. And um, that's where we'll be bringing our new bed at, our new chamber, our new healing chamber. Um, it's basically going to use those new 42-inch rings, which right now they're made in that wisdom energetics. We're going to bring that through in whatever this new energy is that Brenda, my sister, and I have been working on embodying first so that we can put it into the rings. Um, that's something that I'm hoping will come through at that time. And there will be one of those giant 26-inch Tauruses, uh, the, the two Taurus, the troidal field, that's both at the head and the foot of that bed. And so you'll have the 12 rings that come around you, the Taurus on each end. And it's my intention that we're going to be able to, that a person can step in there and along with a meditation, just basically talking them into letting go of whatever it is that no longer serves them. Because I know a lot of us still have a few of these things that we're like, well, this isn't clearing. <laughs> you know, I have a couple of those things that just haven't seemed to have been able to let go of and clear. And so I'm really hoping that within the space of this new chamber that we create, that not only is it holding such a harmonious, strong, potent field for the physical, but that it is, yeah, that it's just going to be a space to where you can simply and easily allow yourself to let go of the old things that no longer serve you so that everything can come back into balance and alignment because healing is simply release and rebalance. Um, but yet, it sounds easy, release and rebalance. So this, this bed will definitely rebalance. So the release is still that tougher part because a lot of times there's things that still are serving us in some way. And anyway, this bed, I hope will allow us to let those go. Anyway, um, a lot of talk there. So we will, um, step into doing questions here. <clears throat> Actually, I think there's something else I wanted to bring up. Oh yeah, that new energy. Um, so, you know, um, you heard me talk about that, that big opening in consciousness that occurred here last March, the end of March, um, March 22nd in this opening of, it's basically opening the lid of all the limited potentials of consciousness. It's actually allowing us to more connect with who we are. Um, and our understanding of why we are, which is huge. Um, <clears throat> cause once you come to those personal understandings, then everything really starts to shift and change. Um, gosh, where was I even going with that? Oh yeah. So anyway, as, as that big shift has been occurring for all of humanity who are ready and willing, who aren't stuck in holding themselves in that old box of limited potentials of creation for limited soul growth and learning experience. Those who are ready to step out of that box of limited potentials of creation, it's, um, there is a new light that is cultivating within and it's deep within. And you probably don't notice it yet because it is cultivating. It is working within that space between the spaces. It, it's the space between, you know, as some quantum physicists would say that we are 99% space that there's actually only out of those trillions and gazillions of atoms within the body. There's all this space between that is the divinity. And that is where we see this new light is cultivating. And as we, as this cultivates within us, it will eventually come to where we are embodying that and we are able to shine it. Um, so my sister, Brenda, she's been, you know, of course she always goes through the fast track with this stuff and she's been going through it for gosh, about almost four weeks now that she has been, you know, her body physically vibrates before she'll go to sleep 
all the all these things are happening to her on the physical um and so it's it's that new light that is cultivating and we've been trying we've been knowing that there's something coming in new a new energy for the tensor tools for quite some time we've been seeing this energy this has been gosh all since 2023 has came but we were just it was just not there and i kept saying that i wasn't ready yet and so brenda has actually been a little over a week that she's helped me begin to bring in that new light to to see it to begin to really witness it to embody it and i really feel that we are close to being able to bring this into the tools um but you know traditionally we've been able to bring in these new energies into the tools and then we work with them and then we eventually embody them just as you know you work with these different energies these different tools that we create and we all embody those we we all you know attune to them they're like training wheels and so this is different this is making brenda and i embody this first so that we can put it into the tools so anyway i'm hoping that we can put that into this new bed that we're going to release on june 7th out in new york and um uh, anyway that's my story um So let's see. Hey, Nika from the Southern California coast. All right. So let's see. We have some questions here and we'll start here. Andrea, I got an extra large stand in stand in singing bowl, 21 inches to stand in. <laughs> that is fantastic. I would like to purchase a practitioner ring or rings to use simultaneously as the bowl is vibrating. Which one or ones would you recommend? And yes, we do have five options um, and would like to, and, and I would be happy to explain the differences in those. So in the practitioner rings that we have, we have the 29 inch golden fire, which is, which is a, it's a beautiful, wonderful tool. Um, the golden fire is, is a great energetic. It's more, gosh. So the, the set of three rings that we have, that we have as a practitioner set are the golden fire, the harmony and the regeneration. Now, those three rings work together very well. They're opening up a space to allow you to do some deeper clearing. Um, those still were created prior to 2020, um, which just simply means that they were, they were working in a different way. Um, they're still a great ring. If you have any of those rings, they're still a fantastic ring. And some people really are drawn to you know, those specific rings, especially that 29 inch golden fire ring. A lot of people are still drawn to it. I myself don't really care for either three of those rings anymore because, you know, we've stepped into what we had the alchemist set for a little while. They were a thinner gauge, um, practitioner ring, which we've discontinued now. Um, but we are the, the, the two rings, that are the most profound to me and to most people that we run the rings on what i mean by running the rings is we take the practitioner rings and we have a person standing in one ring the grounding ring is an excellent one to stand in and then we take that 23 inch new energy ring aka the wisdom ring and you just simply bring that down over the person slowly so that it is um so here's Here's the person. And as you bring this ring down slowly, you can feel as you are moving the ring, the person here that is holding the ring and moving this large ring around the person, other person can feel where there's stuck energies. And usually it's in that high heart to throat area. And you simply run that ring up and down until you feel it clear. And most people who are running the ring can feel it as are most people who are within that column. Now that's how you use the practitioner rings, but the 23 inch grounding ring and the 23 inch new energy ring, those two create what we call the earth alchemy set. Now the earth alchemy is 
it's a pretty amazing set of rings that that pair of rings and that is totally what i would suggest using with the bowl now you you can use just a single ring and if you do i would still suggest that 23 inch new energy aka the wisdom ring that ring is amazing now when you bring that together with that grounding ring they amplify each other they hold space they're creating something greater than the sum and really those two rings together are what i would suggest using for that bowl and that sounds so flipping amazing andrea i would love to um i would love to experience that but yeah that's that's what i would suggest using is um is that earth alchemy set of rings that set of two or else just the wisdom ring and you know again when what resonates with you so with the practitioner rings what what i always tell people is to go into the heart space and when you pull up the pictures don't worry about the names or descriptions just go into the heart space and just feel because the energy comes through those photos and through the website and you can just feel what your body's reaction is to those rings um but yet i still me personally i always suggest the earth alchemy uh rochelle if you are aware of it might you speak to the integration of your tools with the concepts of electro and magnetic gardening i've been researching the use of copper wire for that Yes, so electroculture has become a huge buzzword, huge, huge. Um, everybody's into electroculture right now. Um, you know, the Facebook website grew from like 1,800 to 81,000, I think. Uh, just crazy. Um, and, and people are seeing it all over the internet, YouTube, everywhere. So the basis to electroculture, I really cannot say a lot about electroculture because I have not been able to make the time or take the time or really truly been inspired to study it as of yet. What we have done is we have, you know, because when this electroculture thing came up, we, we put the three inch and the three and a half inch wisdom rings on sale with um, offerings to to offer free products or product discounts for those who do the studies with um, with plants. And so I'm sorry, the web page is down right now. It's not accessible until we get things moved around with the website. But we do have um, some pages where on our website, it's the plant vitality experiment. Um, and so with that, we're starting to get some feedback from people like f using uh, a wisdom ring under a flat of sprouts and how it shaves one to two days off of the, the grow time for sprouts. Um, you know, we, we've seen a few other people who have shared photos and some of them are posted on that page, which will be up here by next week. Um, that there are a few people who are sharing photos that just shows that the growth is more now electroculture from my understanding though it rely it, it works with paramagnetism so the paramagnetism is something that the tensor rings were um, studied by dr philip callahan who is an expert on paramagnetism now dr callahan said that the tensor rings elicit a paramagnetic value many times greater than anything he's ever tested. So the paramagnetic value is something that creates ormus out of your drinking water. It puts a high spin rate. So that is one of the things on the physical that tensor rings are doing. What is, from my understanding, what electroculture is working on is paramagnetism. And the, again, the tensor rings create something many times more in value than anything ever tested for paramagnetic. And that was according to Dr. Philip Callahan. Um, and so that's huge. And so to me, really, the tensor ring is the way to go for electroculture. 
Now, the reason why I really push the wisdom ring is, is because we, we made, we made that wisdom ring for, um, last October, 2022, October, we created, uh, well, we worked on that ring and we saw that, um, for the, for the, um, radionics convention here in South Dakota, it's a master radionics, it's an international convention. And, um, basically everybody there is, is, is there for agriculture. Most every person is there for agriculture reasons. A lot of people still do work with the human, even though that's not acceptable within the United States. It is in other countries to work with people with radionics. And I don't do radionics, but I do teach how to utilize our tools with radionic broadcasts. Um, so these wisdom rings, we were seeing that when you put this around a plant, that a plant is able to pull nutrients out of the soil that were not there before. How this does this is this works with the morphogenetic field, the consciousness of the plant, because all physical reality, everything is energy. Energy is nothing more than patterned by consciousness. So it is consciousness that patterns energy to have creation. And so, you know, concept with humanity is, is that, yes, we have this one larger agreed upon creation, but within that, we bring our own patternings to work within this matrix, let's say, of pattern energy that is creation. And right now we've taken the box off the matrix. The lid's gone, the box is gone. And so now that is why we are able to more pattern our creation individually beyond the scope and limits of what it used to be. But with this wisdom ring, we are seeing that it is simply allowing the plant to shift what nutrients are actually available within the soil. <clears throat> and actually one of the keynote speakers at the dowsing convention is also at the radionics, um, Dr. Dr. Michelle Peel. And she is phenomenal and amazing because she brings you the science with this stuff. And she totally agrees with that whole concept that, that there are always all the nutrients available within soil well, there, there's always the nutrients found within soil, but they're not always readily available. And so what she does too is she uses her modality to bring in the availability of those nutrients to the plant. Kind of like what we're doing, but we are holding the space for the consciousness of the plant to bring in the availability of those nutrients. So, I mean, this isn't just something far out there and, you know, <laughs> this isn't really a far out concept. Um, but anyway, as far as electroculture goes, I'm sorry that I'm not well versed enough on electroculture to really make a comparison with what we do and with electroculture. But I will tell you that as you begin to work with this and you, you study electroculture and you are using your copper wire, cut it to sacred measurements. So we do have that website, sacredmeasures.com. It's an old website. We're getting ready to consolidate that and put that onto a new platform because we're not able to go in and make changes to it. So when you go to sacredmeasures.com, go to measurements, the tab, you'll see their measurements. There will be a thing called straight line cubit measures. These are not ones to make tensor rings with unless they specify some of the measurements on that page can make tensor rings some of the measurements on that page can only be used be used in straight line cubit measures what i mean by that is is that that specific measurement is used to create a tensor ring for the regular measures this is a straight line cubit measure as are the poles of our pyramids um this is the standard Toyota Wakan unit, that very specific measurement. Now, one of the measurements that is a great one to use is the STU measure. The other measurement, um, some of the other measurements for straight line cubit measures, just to give you a little bit of an understanding of the profundity of this, is, is that there was a cubit measure that came from the Great Pyramids. Um, uh, the, the gentleman who rediscovered this um, he, he called it the, um, the Royal cubit. This cubit measure 
contains the sine wave of the hydrogen atom. The sine wave of the hydrogen atom is 8.3 inches. So when you start to cut your wire or your poles that you use, you can use wooden dowels will also carry this energetics of straight line cubit measures. So in electroculture, you have your wooden dowel. Cut it to these specific sacred measures, whether it's the 333 megahertz or that STU or the one that has the sine wave of the hydrogen atom. So basically the hydrogen atom, when you cut that to that 25 point whatever inches, that creates three sine waves. And so that is adding extra energetics, just like what we do with the poles of our pyramids, with everything that we create in the ascension chambers, everything is cut to those specific measurements to bring in more layers. So with electroculture, that is what I've been trying to put out there is to use these sacred measurements within your construction of your electroculture devices. And again, adding a tensor ring to that, I feel they are going to really work well together. Um, another question, is the new energy the same as the wisdom ring or the new energy even newer than the wisdom ring? So yes, our apologies, the new energy the 23 inch new energy ring is the 23 inch wisdom ring at the time we were really trying to figure out names and what these were doing and so we we had new energy and wisdom used simultaneously which is totally confusing we are going to go through, like I say, with this new website construction, we are going to work on simplifying everything. And that may include changing a lot of the names. Um, we, we made changes in the names of four, but that had to do with a Google analytic thing. And, you know, I'm over that. We're going to try to simplify everything for everybody who comes there. Um, and, and plus, we may be getting rid of some of the energies and not selling them anymore. And who knows, we may have something new coming in as well, or else it's going to get anchored into all the tools. We really don't know. Um, but yes, we were, we will simplify the names of these tools and, and, and help people find what they're looking for easier on the website. Uh, Karen, I am electro hypersensitive. So, um, yes, sensitivity to electromagnetics has, has really become a thing. Uh, the nervous system locked into a fight or flight state. I do so much to calm and it's still getting worse. Is there anything from your scope of awareness someone can do to allow the golden fire to assist? Okay. So the hypersensitivity to electromagnetics, we've had some different realizations on this over the past few years. So first of all, everything in physicality is electromagnetic in nature. Everything physical is an electromagnetic field. Now it is the discordant electromagnetic fields that cause us issues. Now, if you and your bioelectric so your heart is this big electromagnetic generator six feet across if your all of your fields are just off kilter you're not fully grounded connected and you're just all your fields are just everywhere you are very sensitive to those outside forces of disharmonious electromagnetic fields. Once your field is aligned, grounded, balanced, everything, it's, it fortifies everything. You then become basically untouchable. The more aligned, grounded, connected, fortified, maybe not be the right word, but we'll use that. The more you are in that space, the less you are affected by any outside energy. I use the cell phone tabs and the all of this for show. These ones are for show. I use the cell tab also for show. 
because I am able to stay fully aligned, grounded, my field fortified. Oh gosh, I need to find a different word. Fortified so that I don't need any of these on my cell phone because I harmonize this discordant energy. So for electromagnetic hypersensitivity, um, so there, there's a couple of concepts there. One of the concepts is that we've had, you know, in the past, maybe one, maybe two or three times a year, if that, we'll have a call from somebody that says, okay, I have the golden fire generator in my home and that damn cell phone tower is still frying me and I'm having all these issues. And when we've looked in, we've seen that the generator and all these tools are working perfectly, but that there is a choice within that person because everything is a choice. The person has chose to be in fear and to allow, well, gosh, I'm really trying to word this more delicately, but a person is allowing on some level for those energies to still affect them. And so we get them to step in and step into their power and their light and say, no, I stand in my power and I do not allow that outside energy to affect me anymore. So that is one thing where it begins with the, the mind, the, the choice, the mental, um, the beliefs, the programs, the fears, all of that can affect the ability of those golden fire tools to work. Now, that's not to say that is what's going on with you, Karen. Um, some solutions. One of them is, yes, to simply go into the heart space where you are grounded, connected, you're in the heart, that fortifies the field. From there, you make a clear conscious choice. Say, no, I no longer participate in allowing any outside energies, electromagnetics, dense energies, other people, nothing like that. I no longer allow those outside energies to affect me. And just put your foot down, say, damn it, this is my choice. That's one thing you can do. The other thing that I usually suggest to hypersensitivity to electromagnetics is the Merkaba activation. If you've ever ordered from us, you always get one of these little cards, which just talks about the Merkaba. It's a big deal. The Merkaba is an electromagnetic field. It is something that we can actually own as a physical being because it is connected to the physical being. But for most of us, this Merkaba field quits spinning right after birth. It's just these kids that have been born, gosh, and they're older kids now in their 20s, ever since around 2000. These kids, um, everybody who's been born since that time, um, well, the majority of them kept their Merkaba fields functioning after birth. Some of them just, it was a choice. It, some of them, the, the, the field no longer functions. A lot of them, it still does. So reactivating your Merkaba to create that electromagnetic field that works with your field, your bioelectric field, keeps everything grounded, centered, aligned. Plus this field creates a disc shape that's about 50 feet across. And then you can put intentions into this field. And that too is where you can put the intention. I no longer allow those outside fields to affect me. Put that intention into your Merkaba field. That is a very self-empowering thing to do. So we do have the website, Crystal Merkaba. Um, we really need to update all of our videos on the Merkaba activations, but we have several out there spanning, you know, 12 years of Merkaba activations. And the older ones, it was a little bit more long-winded and more heady then all the newer stuff, which is just a simple three breath, reactivate your Merkaba. Um, so that's, that's what I would suggest is to do some digging on the Merkaba and reactivate your Merkaba field and put in your programs and intentions. 
All right. Um, Rochelle, yes, I have one of the wisdom rings, and I found that the pepper plant had that had the ring has more offshoots starting to come out when the one that than the one that was the night. Than the one that mm-hmm. sorry, I'm having a hard time reading today. <laughs> So Rochelle is saying that um, she's noticed that with the wisdom ring already that there's more offshoots coming out of the plant with the ring. And that's fantastic to hear. Elaine, could you tell me what to use to determine the frequency of the rings? Do you douse it? So <clears throat> when Slim Fur- Sperlings first started making the rings, he discovered that the sacred cubit, or the royal cubit as he called it, which isn't the royal cubit that you'll find in straight line measures. Um, anyway, Slim Sperling found that that original ring that they created created a an oscillation of 144,000 mega or 144 megahertz. So out of that 144 megahertz, how they determined that was they used a scientific instrument called called an oscilloscope. That oscilloscope they would bring that um, that probe into the very center of the ring and they were able to measure that 144,000 megahertz. Then there was a, um, a mathematician, uh, Hans Becker, who created a theory on, on a ring that would create 177 megahertz. And that's what they did is Slim and him created a ring that created 177 megahertz frequency. Um, now when we were first getting into this, um, we actually worked with professional dowsers. There were dowsers who would call us up and say, okay, this one gentleman, oh my goodness. He gave us all kinds of different rings. One was the 333 megahertz. Now when we, I don't, you know, I teach Dow, I teach in the dowsing and everything. And I do use a pendulum occasionally, but where I feel my most reliable information comes from is my sister, Brenda. She is so in the heart. She doesn't get taken down rabbit holes. I mean, I fully trust the information that comes through my sister, but yet in the beginning, we would always get the information from my sister. And then we would ask others in our larger circles, dowsers, those who also just have that sight, that knowing, um, we'd ask them for verifications and we'd always get, well, most time we would get the verification from those that we trusted, uh, as the same as Brenda's. So Brenda was the one who was doing the asking on the 333 megahertz ring. And we were finding that it was sometimes it was actually 332.6 megahertz. When you take it over a body of water, it raises to like 333 point something megahertz. It, so it shifts just a little bit. Um, one of the professional dowsers gave us the 764 megahertz um, and the 188 megahertz. And then, so then that was, that was for some time. That was up until like 2012, 13, something like that. Then another... Um, Gosh, one of my buddies, master radionics teacher, master dowser, um, good friend of mine, Marty Lucas, Martin Lucas. He's the one who him and another professional dowser and radionics person doused in the galactic cubit. The galactic cubit was the first one that came in that did not have a static measurable frequency within there, that it would change depending on what the person needed as they were holding the ring and who happened to be holding the ring. So it was a different frequency for every person. That is when we created the first etheric template, which we then called the galactic ascension ring. Within that template, there was the frequencies and properties of all the plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms of the planet. So basically, as we began to work with the etheric templates, the higher dimensional aspects of these tools, there is a huge, huge, plethora of frequencies available within there but your ring does not just bring through a single frequency it is multi-layered depending on what it is that you need as determined by your higher self your soul is the one who determines what is in the highest and best to come through here so anymore our rings do contain all those frequencies before from slim forward and all the rings we've created. 
So the wisdom ring, the wisdom ring contains all those frequencies and properties of everything we've created before it. Um, so, and, and they're multi-layer too. So if you drop an oscilloscope in here and you really concentrate and focus and intend to bring through a specific frequency, I could imagine that your oscilloscope will pick up that one single frequency. But I imagine if you put several probes in here that you will find that there are many different frequencies running at the same time. Um, so basically it doesn't, you know, it's really hard to determine the frequencies anymore. Now, as far as there's a lot of ring makers out there and some people are like, oh, I have the 432 megahertz and I have the 528 megahertz. I don't believe it. We've never really checked, but I, I, I maybe. There's not anybody else out there who's using authentic templates. There's maybe three people in the world that I know of. One of them creates tensor rings um, that create these authentic templates. And that's what I was talking about that contain all those frequencies and properties. And so tensor rings, are they do not have a set way that you can determine this length and this frequency. Um, they're they're across the board there's no set standard to what the cubit measure is and what frequency it produces so it's really hard to determine on the frequencies of the rings sorry if i got a little bit woo woo on that for some of you <laughs> but yeah it's it is what it is um marie do the fluids of the body become ormus due to the rings does the wisdom ring do this what sort of aura do people have with the rings so Dancing with water, the new science of water, they have shown that the tensor rings and Dr. Philip Callahan talking about the high spin rate that it puts to the water, to the molecules. So paramagnet, paramagnetic puts a high spin to molecules. Dancing with water has shown that when you put water within this column of energy of the ring, that it becomes lighter in weight in the lab. It is producing such a high spin rate of the molecules within the water, that that is what is making it lighter in weight. That is the definition of Ormus. Um, so the rings are shown to create Ormus with water. So yes, when you wear the ring, we are mostly water. So we can certainly assume that that high spin rate is put to that water within the body, as well as the water that you drink. Um, so it does raised and that's what we see is that it raises the frequency and vibration of the water in the body and of the entire body itself because we are mostly water um so the wisdom ring does this but any tensor ring can do this to, to a working tensor ring creates that field to create ormus out of the water and so these the the rings that dr philip callahan were checking were the older rings, the, the, the sacred cubit, the 144 megahertz. And we've gone so far beyond that. Um, what sort of aura do people have with the rings? Um, so we noticed that the rings in the biofeedback studies that we've done with the cell phone tabs, as well as like the Gaia spheres, we've done some studies with those and even activating the Merkaba is a pretty phenomenal one. But these fields align chakras, energy bodies, they clear the mental and emotional field, they make organs function better. And basically they are, they change your aura. Um, we have some of the rings that we've seen through the years that would change the color of your aura field. Um, and a lot of people who do the photography at holistic fairs, um, you know, the the, the, the good photography that uses the, the old Polaroid film style of photos, that style of, of uh, aura photography is pretty fantastic. And yeah, we see that changing the auric field greatly. Um, so let's see. Andrea, I have the silver water ring. Is it energetically the same as the water rings? So the silver water ring is the water alchemy ring. It used to be the golden fire, but we, but yes, that's another thing we need to update on the website is the, the energetics of these rings. So the silver water rings are the ones that are, it's actually, 
this ring right here, this outer ring, is the silver water ring. And so we have shifted this into that water alchemy, aka wisdom ring. So the water alchemy is geared specifically for water, um, where this one is geared for making the, the divine I am activator pendant. But physically, this is the same ring as the water ring. And the water ring is that that energy of the water alchemy ring. Um, so it has been updated from the golden fire, which it originated. Um, okay. So a question here on the electroculture and using the sacred measurements. So when you are using the sacred measurements in, and you are, measuring out how long you want your stick to be and again if you're using you know like either the 333 megahertz cubit or the stu whatever cubit measure you use use it in centimeters get yourself a good meter stick that you can measure in centimeters because when you try to measure 8.3 inches for the sine wave of hydrogen it's tough to figure out what exactly a third of an inch is you know, and to get it as exact as you can. Now, when you are creating these specific measures and you're measuring out your, your standard Teotihuacan unit, your STU, and you're measuring your wooden dowel, again, you can use the full cubit, you can use a half cubit, you can use two times the cubit. The, that information is also on the sacred measures website of what cubit you can use to cut it down into thirds or halves or eighths or three times. So it's just, but using the millimeter measures allows you to eyeball it as close as you can to the millimeter and to cut your measurement as close as you can to that millimeter length. So, um, just eyeballing and just using your calculator or Google to find your fractions. Um, hey, Samson. Curious to understand that by adding a Gaia sphere or a tensor field generator into the wisdom and new energy when it gets fully anchored will be profound in the electro nature fields. So, you know, the electroculture using the Gaia spheres and the tensor field generators, um, I feel really are beneficial. So thank you for bringing this whole concept up for the Gaia spheres and the tensor field generators in electroculture, Samson, because yes, that really is huge. Now we, we do, there's a lot of people who have to, who do commercial agriculture that use the seven inch harmony generator because it creates the largest field field of influence out of any of our spheres. And that is a 12 mile field of influence. And so we've actually seen people do studies in New Zealand with a seven inch harmony generator that they use to move Japanese beetles out of a field. But they're not like some people who are like, oh, let's just kill those beetles and that's how we're gonna do this. No, you have to do this in balance. So we took a seven inch generator, we put it, they put it into the woods outside of the field area. And that was the draw. That was the safe space for those Japanese beetles to go. Then they put another seven inch tensor field generator in the field itself with the intention of driving the beetles out of making it an unwelcome space for the beetles to be. And sure enough, they would see that the beetles would crawl around on the opposite side of those of the of the crops to get away from that generator. And they eventually just all left the field. So, you know, and I used to have a greenhouse and one of my plants had a blight. And this was probably 12 years ago. Um, I made a large tensor field generator. I put it over top of that plant 
and it cleared the blight out of that plant as well as the cuttings that came off of it. Um, pretty profound. So, you know, we discovered even back when we were creating the Galactic Ascension Ring, and especially when once we got to the Balance and Harmony Ring, that those particular fields were working with the DNA of GMOs. So the Balance and Harmony Ring was the very first one that we saw that was clearing the GMO of a seed or a seedling or even a full plant as well as the effects that that genetically modified organism that GMO food had upon the person it would also clear the person so the um so using these fields um so using the Gaia sphere in the Gaia sphere we call it the Gaia sphere because this is connecting with the earth so it is a very earth-based energy field and the tensor field generators are great there's kind of broadcasters this has more consciousness to it the gaia sphere does it's um it is something that is working with the earth now using the tensor field generators i usually suggest the harmony generator because that is working with the plants the divas of the land um it is more working in nature than like the golden fire which is more about the clearing work and the harmonizing discordant fields things like that where the harmony generator is all about working with the nature but the gaia spheres so the new energy gaia absolutely one of my favorites and this is the one that has that wisdom energetics so truly <laughs> the true real real investment into your garden yes would be a new energy gaia sphere and simply place that out on the soil in your garden with your plants and that is going to allow each of those plants to repattern the consciousness or to the consciousness to repattern the energy to start pulling nutrients out of the soil it's going to work with all of the 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 divas of the land the, the everything in nature and the earth itself and so truly, and that's something that I don't express enough because I'm trying to get people to that are in electric culture to really buy into something that is a less in that's more inexpensive, like a wisdom ring, like a three year or three and a half inch wisdom ring, which are 15% off. They're usually 36 bucks. And if you do the studies and you send us photos and testimonials, we'll send you free new tools or product discounts. So, you know, that's something that's more affordable than like a four or five hundred dollar um gaia sphere but truly this new energy gaia sphere is the premier tool to use in your gardens greenhouses and to me it is so much more than electric culture so much more um how do you how does it feel to add a straight line cubit wire into a ring or sphere placed on the earth for enhanced growth well, we have a lifetime guarantee on the golden fire and light rods and a lot of people whose there's break and we have them send us a picture of it. And if they are in international, we'll tell them not to ship it back to just keep it and place it in a plant. And I actually have a lot of the ones that I've broken in the process of making them that yes, I stick them into the ground. I stick them in the potted plants. So to me, this cold and fire and light one is a phenomenal tool to stick into plants. And I do love the idea of using a ring or a tensor field generator with it. So this is anchoring a lot of light consciousness into the soil and into the plant. So, you know, for electroculture, yes, make your straight line wooden dowel wrap it with your sacred measure wire and put a generator or gaia sphere in it i really feel that is going to be an amazing amazing thing because it also these spheres also act to broadcast energies and this broadcast goes into the earth and into the aquifers everything the soil biome all of that as well as what is above the soil What is your awareness to place a shungite merkaba shape into a silver water tensor ring for the drinking water? So shungite is absolutely amazing to add to the water and a sacred geometry such as the merkaba 
it just adds more levels and layers to that structure within the water. So shungite is amazing to add to the water, but shungite is one of those things that will absorb energetically. So you need to keep that cleared and the tensor ring will clear that. So a lot of people who use shungite on their phones, it's great for a little while, but it absorbs and you need to clear that. And you can clear that Gosh, you can use your wisdom wand or a wand or a ring to put around there for just a few minutes and that will clear it and reset it. But yes, using um, your shungite and the ten rings for water is phenomenal. And that sacred geometry of the Merkaba simply just brings in more layers to it. Renard, hey, good to see you, Renard. Have you had any feedback on using the tools with hypnosis? If you need any, OMG, I had an amazing combo experience. <laughs> we have not had feedback on using the tensor fields with hypnosis. And so would love to get your um, feedback on that for sure, Renard. Definitely. I feel something with that. That's for sure. Uh, Rochelle, so it's a good idea to cut the stick as well as the copper to the sacred cubit lengths or fractions. I've been thinking mostly of measuring the copper, but you're suggesting both. Oh, yes, most definitely do both. Because, um, you know, when I see a lot in electroculture, again, my apology, mm, please pardon my lack of deep knowledge on electroculture. I've only scratched the surface of understanding of it. But yes, using a wooden dowel will hold those straight line cubit measures, anything out of wood or metal, um, specifically copper, brass, are great ones to use for carrying those energetics because they create a piezoelectric flow because all of the crystal structure is aligned within a stick. It naturally has an alignment of that flow. Um, so yes, the wooden dowel totally cut to your sacred measure and cut the wire that you use to twist around the dowel, totally use the sacred measure with that too. And that is going to put an entire new level to the whole electric culture concept. And as Samson mentioned, putting a tensor ring at the base of that too is, will be absolutely amazing. Uh, do you have any tools that will help the prevention of weed growth in a lawn? That's a good question. Um, what I feel and see would be to simply use any of those outdoor tools, such as the Rainmaker. You can put your intentions in with that, the Rainmaker plate, or a um, or a tensor field generator, preferably the Harmony, preferably the seven inch Harmony, to set outdoors, or an activator. Um, any of those style of tools that will hold and amplify intentions is what I would put into um, is is what I would put into there. And so, um, what you do to put those intentions in is simply so. The way I'm seeing it is is that again, you don't want to. Hmm, <laughs> sorry about my words, be mean to the weeds and say, no, you damn weeds, we don't want you here. But it is more about promoting the more harmonious and beneficial plants, which could be weeds. Um, you know, there's those old theories of nature where everything that a person needs grows within their little area and that includes those weeds um but you know um as far as yeah so for for creating that most beneficial lawn um to get rid of to to move out those things that are not beneficial to to your space and to your lawn that is where I put those programs, those intentions into those tools when you set them out there to just, so the reason that I'm trying to word this this way is because this is kind of what I've seen is, is that once you set like that seven inch generator outside or your 
your um, rainmaker plate or whatever it is, is, is that that is then with your intentions that is promoting the more beneficial or the more aesthetic, the more joyful lawn for you. And that's it is having those, those mo those emotions of gratitude in there as well versus, Oh damn you weed, you know, versus uh, something that is beautiful, aesthetically pleasing, enjoyable, something that brings me joy. Um, putting that into that field that it broadcasts into the lawn to where your grass. And as we know, if you have all those beneficial grasses that are growing better then you have less of the other opportun opportunistic plants that will grow to fill in those spaces. So when you have a thick, healthy, lush, beautiful lawn that you wish to enjoy, that will um, fill in the spaces to where those opportunistic, <laughs> sorry, I can't even say the word, where those style of plants will come in, the weeds. Long answer. Sorry about that. I think I'm starting to fizzle out here. Um, how far does the Gaia sphere radiate? The Gaia spheres traditionally don't radiate out as far. So, like a golden fire Gaia or a golden fire generator will have like a two and a half mile sphere of influence, where the golden fire Gaia only has about three quarters of a mile influence. Now, the wisdom Gaia, it's more like a city block. Um, so the, the wisdom or new energy Gaia sphere, again, it's, it's not radiating as much out into this physical realm because it is radiating higher, lower. It, it's, it's a, it's a deeper, higher connecting field than it is radiating out. So it's bringing more to that field, which is smaller. So, yep, this Gaia sphere, which is that, um, the new energy Gaia, and this is one's a prototype. Um, it doesn't, it just has a rounded wire versus the flattened wire, which you get in the new energy Gaia sphere. That one is about a two city block area or sorry. Yeah. Yeah. One to two, one to two city blocks. I'm seeing it more as one city block. Um, is the sphere of influence on that. So, oh my goodness, I'm going to jump here, over here to chat because, oh my goodness, there's a lot going on in chat. So pardon me while I read some chat and have a drink of my wonderful dirty chai here. So yes, again, um, obviously I don't read the chat as we move along here so oh man i love you guys thank you so much for you know and you guys give such great confirmations and and everything else um And anyway, um, let's see. Does the new tool bring in a conscious awareness of what frequencies around us are and that they are all as everything is happening for us? Uh, so the question on, let's see. The new tool and i'm assuming you are speaking of this new energy that we're bringing in um the wisdom energy is so so the question is about um bringing awareness of the frequencies that are around us and that everything is happening for us that it truly is a mental okay so the concept of everything is our energy and our energy is here to serve us is totally a mental concept. That is a beautiful thing to begin to embody and to embrace is that everything is your energy and your energy is here to serve us. And that is where we step into truly understanding that we are a powerful creator because it is our consciousness that patterns all the energy of everything in our creation. 
That is huge. Now the wisdom ring. So the question is about the tools and how they can help bring that to you. So the wisdom tools were, um, they are a great step in that direction in that that is part of the energy work that we do, the consciousness work with these wisdom tools, the wisdom wand and, and such is, is that we, we do begin to use this as exercises. So on some of the 50 questions Fridays over this past year, we have some of those meditations where we go in and we release all of the things that no longer serve us, our old constructs, our old creations, our old belief systems, our old traumas, we begin to release those into wisdom. And that is why it's called the wisdom ring is that it takes that experience or that lifetime or that trauma and your light distills the light and information out of that lifetime or trauma or experience that comes in as wisdom. That is why we call it the wisdom rings is because it is taking that and completing it. It is in completion. It's bringing it in as wisdom, light, and consciousness. Now, when I'm talking about this new bed we're creating, that is one of my intentions is that this new light that is coming in, this new energy, and if we can get that placed into this new healing bed, that that is my intention is, is that is going to help us truly step into that realization that everything is energy and that your energy is here to serve you and that it just steps you more into being that conscious creator. And again, as we begin this little journey of that shifting of consciousness from being within the box of limited potentials of creation to being where there is no box in this 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 higher potentials greater potentials of creation that is really where i feel this new energy is going to take us is that it is going to also bring that into the mind into the mental because that is bringing that new light also into the mind and as a matter of fact i had a session with somebody yesterday which was so flipping profound on my um my uh whatever sessions i do <laughs> sorry i forget the name of 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 um creating the master you or whatever it is. So my, my telephone sessions that I do, um, yesterday was so flipping profound because I really saw that person, that, that light coming into the mind to where they just got it. Um, it started to bring in and bypass all of those old constructs, all those belief structures, um, everything else to where they were really stepping in as that conscious creator that they are. Um, anyway, um, Vina, you mentioned that you did not like the golden fire energy anymore. Can you elaborate? I'm looking for a ring smaller than the 23 and have the eight inch chalice. I was interested in the 15. So, Again, when I say that I, I personally don't really like the golden fire anymore, it's just because of where I'm resonating at. You know, uh, the golden fire has been a fantastic, phenomenal energy for me for many years. Ever since the beginning, it was the premier energetic and ring, but I've, I've outgrown it. Um, that's all I've outgrown it. And, and it's not, and I'm not trying to put a hierarchical or a level of growth and where you're at or anything like that. It's just simply where you resonate. And so again, when you look at the products, go into the heart space and feel it. Look at that photo of that golden fire ring and feel it. And you'll have that response, that feeling of what is most beneficial. Sorry, I got farm machinery going by. Now, also, please also let me say that with that 15 inch golden fire ring that you're considering, the golden fire energetics have also been shifting. Because when the chalice energies came in, when we've done a lot of this other work with 
the etheric templates, the higher dimensional aspects of these tools, as we bring more into there in like the wisdom field, the alchemist, all that stuff, that also affects the golden fire ring. So the golden fire ring, so we first noticed that the balance of harmony ring, the harmony ring was becoming more like the golden fire than it had ever been before. And now then all of these rings are starting to shift into these higher potentials as well. So I should rephrase this in what I mean, in what I say about the golden fire. The golden fire in its original form, I really don't like anymore. But the golden fire that we have as, as so let's say this last batch of 15 inch golden fire rings that I created that I twisted up about a month ago, they are much different than the original 15 inch golden fire rings that we created. They are just, everything is raising. And so, um, I don't want my influence to be there for you to say, okay, well, this one's no good. So I'm not even going to look at it. No, please do go into the heart and feel into that ring and you will feel if that is the right beneficial ring for you, which, you know, so that 15 inch golden fire ring has been changing over the years and it's really been changing over the past, you know, one year, especially. And then here's another beautiful question that goes along with this. So thank you, Linda. If you put the wisdom ring inside of a larger ring, does it shift the larger ring into the wisdom energetic? That is it, you guys. That if you have any of the older tools, so let's say I kind of felt some of you guys kind of worrying about, oh, my old golden fire rings and Maybe they're not good anymore um, and things like that. So thank you, Linda, for bringing this up. Use a wisdom ring or a wisdom wand or a wisdom Gaia sphere, whatever it is that is the wisdom energetics and put that with your older energetics of tools, bring their fields together, whether you're sitting one ring inside of another or a generator or whatever it is, just bring the tools together while you're in the heart space and have your intentions of shifting the energetics of your older tools to bring through what is in the highest and best for you now. It's huge. You can shift the energy of the older tools to bring it into the highest potentials for you now, whether that's the wisdom ring or the chalice or whatever it is. So using the wisdom ring with, or the wisdom wand, I love the wisdom wand, can't say enough about it, good things about it, or the 23 inch new energy ring, you put all your tools inside of that one, be in the heart space and ask that those tools raise to meet you where is in your highest and best. And don't get too concerned about the wording. When you're in your heart space and you are actually physically putting those rings or those tools together, your higher self knows what the heck it is that you want. So you don't have to get so hung up on the specific words because when you're in your heart, you don't even have to say words. When you're in your heart space and you are working with your higher consciousness, your soul, higher self, whatever you see and say it as, and you've brought those two rings together, that is your intention there already. So your intention is there. And the less we kind of really step in and try to put our parameters on it, usually the better and more open, the more potentials come in versus us trying to limit the potentials of being like, okay, I want this golden fire to just be this specific thing. Um, you know, your intention already in the highest and best for me. And that can be your base intention that you need for the mind highest and best for me. So yes, you can shift. So we've seen, um, the president of the American society of dowsers had a ring from slim Sperling that slim created himself. And then she had one of our wisdom rings and she had one in each hand and she brought them together and she shifted the energetics of the 
Spurling Ring. And that was when, you know, that's when we first heard about that whole concept. And so we tried it ourselves and sure enough. And so that is something that I've been telling people too, is to use your wisdom rings to shift the energetics of your older tools and anybody else's tools that you may receive. Does the wisdom ring connected click together to the wisdom wand? Does the energy change? So, you know, using the tool. So the question is about using a wisdom ring with the wisdom wand. Any time you are drawn to experiment with the tools, please do so. And it is going to do something individually for you. It might work for others too, but man, it is an individual thing on you working with various tools together. And it is amazing the different fields and the different energies that can come through when you start adding ring, when you start adding tools together. So use your own guidance and play, play with it, play with it, be in joy, play with it. And it is amazing at what can come through. Um, so yeah, it, um, you know, and we, we used to see that when you add a tensor ring to a tensor ring, it increases the potency by, oh, about 24%. I don't know how true any of that is anymore. Um, Oh, here's a, here's an interesting um, one from over here on the chat side. I have a rainmaker and it's been amazing for directing severe weather away from our area. We are in drought and would appreciate more beneficial rain. Do I need to keep putting that intention into the rainmaker? I think you remember you saying something about the rainmakers innately hold the intention of rain. So yes, the rainmakers will innately hold that intention of rain. Um, so that's one I've been struggling with too, um, because we've been in drought here and mm, for me, it's been a personal struggle because I know that consciousness controls weather. I've seen 12 year old girl move clouds years ago. And I know that the weather patterns are a reflection of consciousness. And, um, and so that's something I've struggled with for a few years on. And that's why we quit making a rainmaker for, for the longest time. That's because I was like, well, who am I really to, you know, shift the patterns of weather? Um, we have a good friend, Organite Austin. He wrote the book, The New Science of Rain. And he's used tensor field generators and intentions and, and other tools to change weather patterns in Austin, Texas. Pretty, pretty phenomenal thing. Um, and we used to work with the earth elementals, you know, if it was really windy out, we would ask the, the wind elemental to come in and just be chill. Um, you know, so it's, um, I really think that it is for me, myself in the way that I have not been able to personally pattern allow the beneficial patterning of rain because again the tools are going to work what is in the highest and best for for everything for whatever that reason is but yet i still feel like we should be able to create this beautiful little oasis of greenness around our area here and for me it is still my own personal thing of not being able to step into my full power and allow this to truly happen and i'm about ready I'm about ready to let all that stuff go. But um, anyway, um, yeah, <laughs> there was a, a statement on here. Perhaps you should have called the Rainmaker a weather harmonizer. <laughs> and yeah, that, that really would be a better way to put it is, is um, you know, is kind of harmonizing all weather. And, you know, and again, I feel putting a Gaia sphere or a, you know, your, or your um, tensor field generator with that rainmaker is a great thing too. But um, anyway, I better about be done here. Where's the best place to place the rainmaker? Really, the best place to place it is on the ground outside. 
Um, to me, that's really where it is connecting into the water, the earth, because that's how we see it is that if you ever watch how rain clouds are formed, it's like they create this magnetism of water, of water droplets. And as, as you stand on a high point and you watch over a plane where the, the rain clouds are forming, it's really interesting because you'll see that haze below. You'll see a small cloud in this haze and it's, it's that it's the you know it's like that magnetism is drawing those water particles those water molecules into the cloud and you can see the cloud growing in size um in a, a same concept with the rainmaker in that it is magnetizing that water that's within the earth and it is magnetizing that to bring more of those clouds in that water to that excuse me to that area um, so yeah, placing the rainmaker on the ground is is really that best place. Thank you all for being here today. Um, yeah, it was, it was a beautiful day to to hang out, and um, yeah, we'll probably have another fifty questions Friday. I'm guessing next week. Um, not doing anything here for a little bit until June when we go to the Dowsers. So, all right, all. Thank you again, and it was good to see many of you here again. Um, feels like it's been a long while, but have a great weekend. Take care. Enjoy. Stand in your power. Tell creation what you want, and put your foot down with creation. It's a beautiful time to be.